Good afternoon. Welcome to the third part of the video tutorial on solid modeling in NCLab using Plasm. In this part I will show you how to create some uh, more advanced objects using unions, intersections of objects and also how to subtract objects from each other. Um, for this it is convenient to start where we finished in the second part. So this is uh, the simple geometry that consists of two cylinders. Let me create one more cylinder here in the remaining Excel direction. And this can be done by just copying line number 5 and changing the rotation axis from the y-axis to the x-axis. So we'll be rotating in the plane given by the second and third axis. This is how the rotate command works. And we'll call this a cylinder 3 and we will add cylinder 3 into the struct to be shown. Here we go, this is the object that we wanted. And I would like to stress at this point that this is not a solid object. This is just a bunch of objects that are displayed over each other. We cannot do geometric operations with them. But what we can do is we can create a new object. Let's call it, for example, O. That will be really the union. And the union command works in a very simple way. Its argument is a list of all objects that we want to use for the union. And we can display instead of this original structure just the object O. Mm -hmm. Of course nothing much has changed from uh, our point of view looking at this because the union looks exactly as um, as the original structure, but the internal representation in Plasm is very, very different. Now we can really use this as one solid object. It can no longer be decomposed into the cylinders, for example. To do a union, sorry, to do an intersection is very simple. We just switch the word union for intersection. And that's the only difference. So the intersection command also takes a list of objects and it will create their intersection. The result of this operation looks like this. It's a pretty nice solid. I don't have any name for it, but it's nice. The last operation that I would like to show you is how to uh, subtract objects. And for this, probably, uh, we can forget about this object O. We will use just the three cylinders, but instead we will create a new object, a cube of size 2. And now this object uh, has center of gravity at the point 1, 1, 1. We need to move it to have the center of gravity at the point 0, 0, 0, which is the uh, origin of the coordinate system. So let's do that. We will uh, translate the cube in actually all three directions and in each direction by minus 1. This will be my new cube and I can, let's view it to begin with. Okay, well, sure, this translation vector needs to be a list. Okay, this is my cube. Now let's take this a step by step and uh, actually subtract the first cylinder uh, first. So we will do the following. Um, we'll define an object C2 that will be a difference of the cube and my original cylinder. 
and at the end we will display the object C2. This was fast and there's a hole in our cube now. That's exactly what we wanted. If we want to drill more, it's very easy. We'll uh, copy the corresponding line of code and create an object C3 by subtracting uh, the second cylinder from the last object that already has one hole in it. Okay. This means that I made a mistake. Because oh sure I'm I'm viewing my um, object C2. So let's redo this. Now I, sh I would like to see two holes, yes, of course. Here we go. Okay, this is exactly what was supposed to happen. And in the last step, we can also subtract the third cylinder. So let's do that. And let's call the new object C4. And it will be created by subtracting the third cylinder for the object C3 and I should not forget to change the visualization to show the object C4. Now this takes a little bit more time. You can also see that the second operation took more time than, than the first one. This is simply because the object uh, is getting much and more and more complicated. But it should be done fast. Okay, we're done. So this here is our nice cube that we drilled in all possible directions. Okay, we can enter the cube with one opening and exit with another one. So. Um, the elementary tutorial I would like to stop here. It is important to realize that uh, Plasm allows you to do these operations really with any objects, not with those, not only with those simple ones that I showed you. So let me uh, close this and show you perhaps one interesting displayed project. By the way, there is a PDF tutorial that contains some more information than this video. And these um, tutorial uh, projects are accompanying that PDF tutorial. So you can clone them and experiment with those things in much more detail. Let me show you this one, the intersection of uh, randomly generated cubes. This is an interesting uh, project that shows you the computational capability uh, of plasm and also some wild colors. This was done by some experimentation and I should I should better change it. Okay. The uh, this uh, short script which is some 10 max 15 lines does the following. It creates an arbitrary number of uh, cubes whose center of gravity is at the origin. It rotates them uh, randomly and then decreates an intersection of all. The computation will take a little bit, but it was done already. And I hope that you can feel some of the computing power of Plasm because um, to calculate this is not trivial at all. And this also distinguishes PLASM from standard CAD systems. So again I would like to invite you to read a PDF tutorial and uh, play with the displayed projects for PLASM and um, uh, have fun. <laughs>